It's a very powerful inhabitant in the cytoplasm of the cell. It is a fountain house of energy caught by the oxidation of respiratory substrates. It is the mitochondrion, extremely tiny, from 0.2 to 5 micrometer in size. Rod-shaped or spherical, their number varies from 50 to 50,000, depending on the energy expenditure. Electron microscopic studies reveal that a mitochondrion is bound by a double membrane. The outer membrane is smooth, while the inner membrane is rough. The interior of the mitochondrion is the ground substance called the matrix. It is divided into a number of incomplete chambers due to the invagination of the inner membrane. These finger-like projections are called cristae. The inner membrane or cristae bear spherical structures called F1 particles or oxisomes. These are associated with the oxidation and phosphorylation during respiration. They catalyze ATP synthesis. This is the reason why mitochondria are called the powerhouses of the cell. Have a look at the outer membrane. It is smooth and continuous. Chemically, a mitochondrion contains about 75% proteins, about 24% lipids, and small amounts of double-stranded circular DNA and RNA. Due to presence of DNA in them, mitochondria are self-duplicating and play an important role in cytoplasmic inheritance. Mitochondria contain about 70 enzymes and a dozen coenzymes that catalyze the various steps of respiration. Mitochondria are passed through a mother's egg directly to both her sons and daughters. In turn, her daughter, but not her son, passes mitochondrial DNA to her children. Because mitochondrial DNA is passed through the maternal line from mother to child, it contains information about a small number of a person's ancestors. However, since it passes from generation to generation with very little change, mitochondrial DNA is a rich source of information for deep ancestry, going back thousands of years. The mitochondrial genes are all locked together on the mitochondrial chromosome and they're passed down from one generation to the next in most mammals, most of the time. And that inheritance is maternal inheritance, the reason being that the egg has mitochondria in it, the sperm have mitochondria too, but the mitochondria get lost when the sperm fertilizes the egg. So, even though the zygote carries nuclear DNA from both parents, it takes mitochondrial DNA only from the mother's side. Most organelle proteins are synthesized in the cytoplasm from nuclear-encoded mRNAs. These proteins must be imported into the organelle. Special sequences, called signal sequences, target the protein to its proper organelle. Organelles contain protein translocator complexes that are required for this transport. Key players in this process are protein, a signal sequence, chaperonins, ATP, protein translocator complexes, and signal peptidase. Proteins destined for import into an organelle, such as a mitochondria or chloroplast, contain a signal sequence. This sequence acts as a targeting mechanism to ensure the protein is delivered to the proper organelle. In addition, chaperonin proteins aid in the import process. They become associated with a protein while it is still in the cytoplasm. 
This association requires energy from ATP. Chaperonins aid in unfolding the protein so it can travel through the organelle membrane. Here we see two chaperonins bound to the protein that will enter the mitochondria. Protein translocator complexes are embedded in the mitochondrial membrane. These are multiprotein complexes required for protein import. The protein being transported first attaches to the complex on the cytosolic side. The protein then moves into the mitochondria. As it enters the organelle, it is again bound by a chaperonin to prevent premature folding. Once the protein has fully entered the mitochondria, the first chaperonin is released and another class of chaperonins bind. Then a complex called the signal peptidase removes the signal sequence. Lastly, the protein is folded into its final shape and is ready to perform its proper function in the organelle.